Hi, everyone. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Kimberly Lank. I'm a pediatrician. I work for Hogue Medical Group in Huntington Beach, and this is my colleague. I'm Dr. Julie Pomposano. And we are excited to be here today to talk to you about buying for baby part two. And as you know, we are both, well, as you may not know, but we are both pediatricians and mothers. So we're hoping to offer a nice perspective when it comes to these products. And if you have any questions, feel free to type them in. And hopefully at the end, we'll be able to answer all of them, okay? So, oh, and by the way, thank you for your patience. We were having some technical difficulties. So yes. thank you for hanging on. Um, so if any of you have ever tried looking at a baby registry or going to um, a store that has all baby products, it's very overwhelming. Um, there are tons of products, tons of types of products, um, because there are lots of companies that want you to spend money on their products. So there's lots of things available. What we're hoping to do is sort of break it down a little bit so you have more of an idea of some types of products, what, how they could be used, what features to look for. Just keep in mind that, so this presentation is going to be all pictures. Each picture is, we're not saying that that particular brand is better. That just was what we found a good photo of to display whatever we were showing. So one thing that, that we won't do is discuss like specific uh, brand products. And the other thing is this is a very big topic, and so what we're going to focus on are really just the products for newborns and very young infants. Um, so if any, so today we'll be talking about baby on the go, so things like strollers, car seats, that kind of thing, and health and safety. We did have an earlier talk, which you can, you can uh, view on the Hogue YouTube channel, which is Buying for Baby Part 1. And in that one, we talked about sleep and feeding. So products related to sleep, like cribs, bassinets, those kind of things. Um, and feeding was all the things related to breastfeeding, pumps, bottles, pacifiers, um, that type of thing. So if you're interested in that, take a look at that. So today all right so baby on the go includes cars the biggest things in this category are going to be car seat strollers and baby carriers so first of all for car seats so babies need to remain facing backwards until they're two not only two years old excuse me not only is that the recommendation for their safety but it's also the uh, law in calif in the state of california the reason for that is that when babies face backwards um, if there is any, um, if there's a car accident, babies have much less injuries, especially uh, head injuries, which is the most important. And while at the same time, they do not have any increase in injuries of their arms or legs or things like that. So it really is the safest place for baby is, is facing backwards. There are two types of car seats for, for an infant to face backwards in terms, we call it rear facing. There is, oh, there's no way to, okay, so <clears throat> we're going to talk about an infant car seat and a convertible car seat. So <clears throat> a few key points with rear facing um, is that the biggest thing is that the car seat, the straps should be snug, right? They should be snug. They should not be loose. You should not be able to put your hands underneath, right? They they should be snug. This is what, because what's happening is that five point harness, which goes over the shoulders and is on the chest and then goes between their legs, that is holding them in place. So if there was a collision, they stay and they're not getting, you know, like whiplash injuries. Okay, so what should happen is that what this, what this picture depicts most importantly is that the shoulder straps are at the shoulders, not pressing into their neck, but at their shoulders. Now, the most important thing that, I, that probably we see people not do correctly all the time is that right across the chest, you will see the, um, I forgot what it's like called. The buckle or like the harness. Yeah, the harness. Like the it should be like above their nipples, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most people, a lot of people put it down. That's not, where, that's not where it's supposed to go. You want it to go here because you've got your, you've got your, um, your, your bone structure here that's very strong. So that's where you want it to go. And then I would say the two most common mistakes people make is they, they leave that, the straps way too loose mm -hmm. and they don't put that, um, that harness in the right position. Okay. 
don't you think? Yep. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Pull that <laughs> yeah. strap. <laughs> and the baby's not going to like it, but that's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. They're it's going to be safe, and it's not going to harm them in any way. Okay. Um, now, the other thing that you'll see in this picture is, <clears throat> um, I keep looking like as if I have a pointer, Till sorry. Like, yeah. You'll see that this baby is, is in the center in the back seat. So if you only have one child, then the safest place for them is in the middle. Um, because obviously if you, were if you were hit from the sides, the baby's closest in the middle. Now, if you have more than one child, then you're just gonna pick your favorite and put them in the middle. Just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> then it doesn't work out. <laughs> but if you only have one child, um, you would put that baby ideally in the middle um, of the back seat. Now here's an infant car seat. Most people start with an infant car seat. They're so convenient. So the thing with an infant car seat, those are the ones where you see parents carrying the baby, like holding them with the handle and carrying them around, okay? These things are really, really convenient. What happens is that there's an actual base, infant car seat base, that is, um, that is that that is attached into your car, and then the the actual car seat clicks in and out. Mm -hmm. Now the great thing so about this is that you could put you can buy additional bases. Mm -hmm. So you could have a base in mom's car, dad's car, grandma's car. So the, you have one car seat that stays with the baby, but then you can click them in and out of different cars, and you don't have to get different car seats, right? Like I had. I had two, I think. I had like five. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't live by family when I was <laughs> my, my mother, my mother in law, and yeah, aunt and husband. And, yeah. Well, and, I, and I don't know if they still do this, but I know when my kids were little, um, like daycares would let you even leave the car seat. Yes, they do. And so if you had one parent drop the baby off at, car, at daycare, yet another person pick them up, you know, just you just, base. yeah, you just, yeah. everyone, it's all about the base. That's what we're saying. <laughs> um, Pun intended. So uh, the other thing that, that you can do is that, yes, you can click the bait, you can um, click the seat out, um, the car seat out of the base. You can carry the baby, um, which works well at the beginning, but babies plus the car seat get very heavy. Um, what tends to be more useful is you click them out and you put them in um, a stroller that attaches. Yep. Right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later, right. too. Some babies strollers. are small babies, but and you can carry them around for a long time. Some of us have big babies, and they're too heavy to do so. <laughs> 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 now, then there's the convertible car seat. So it's called convertible because the car seats can face backwards, or they can face forward. So you'll see in this picture, there's two kids here. I, it's supposed to be the same car seat. One of the, ch one of the children is is older or I don't know they might be twins one of them is bigger <laughs> so is facing forward um, and the other one's facing backward okay but it's the same car seat now when do you switch and ch move the the child to facing forward they're going to be at least two and then it depends on the parameters of the car seat so all car seats will have a weight and they'll get they'll give you information as to when your child is too big for that car seat um, and then the, only, the thing though with these convertible car seats is the whole car seat is attached into your car. So you do not take these in and out. So if you've got, if the kids are going to be in multiple cars, then you buy multiple car seats, mm -hmm. yep. right? So. Yeah. And these can be usually used till they're, you know, nine years of age. The convertible car seats, they just convert all the way through to like the booster seat too, for mm -hmm. when they're older. And if you ever hear, you know, you don't need to worry about a booster seat, that's much later, but what a booster seat means is that the child's still sitting in some kind of seat, but w if you use the term booster, it means that they're now using the um, car seat um, seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm yeah. looking for, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a, a, a true car seat has the, the harness that attaches in. So that's the difference. All you need to worry about is, um, what what your infant will do though i wouldn't worry too much about the booster situation the other thing is that all car seats have an expiration yes. as well so you can't just you you're not supposed to just use car seats forever um, also most manufacturers will also recommend that if you get into a car accident that the car seat needs to go yeah. because the idea there is that that harness that five point harness may not be working well anymore mm -hmm. yeah damaged yeah. oops Nothing's happening. 
There we go. Oh. There we go. Did we skip? Okay. Did we? No, that's it. All right. So for car seat accessories, so some of these things you may not need in sunny California, but it's helpful to know that they're out there, especially if you are in a uh, colder climate or if you like to travel. So if you see the uh, top left photo there with the uh, little baby head, um, that's a <laughs> the um, floating, the baby, floating head. baby head. Uh, that's a really insulated cover that helps keep the baby warm in their car seat. And then there are other generic covers like the one on the right that just keeps your baby shielded from the weather, the, the sun, from people. Um, and then the bottom left there is a really nice cover that you can use for rain. So that keeps your baby protected from um, the rain. And then there's a little flap there in the middle that you can lift up. And there's a plastic covering to where you can see your baby through, um, but they're still shielded from the rain. So you don't have to worry about them getting wet. So that's a nice thing to have if you're in a more of a rainy climate or just or here. You're travel. Travel the, or The rainy bottom days. left is basically a snowsuit for your car seat. And the bottom... The, the top left and the bottom left is basically like a rain jacket yes. for your car yeah, seat. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Yep. So if you mm -hmm. don't need a snowsuit, then you, your baby doesn't, your car seat doesn't need one right. either. Right, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then the bottom right is more of a versatile uh, cover that, um, it's kind of unique and that you can use it for different things. So you can use it as a car seat cover. You can use it for a nursing cover, um, a wrap. You can put it onto a high chair, uh, your grocery cart. I And then also you can also use it as a, as a blanket. Um, it's a very usually thin material that's pretty stretchy. So despite what the picture shows, you can you can take that um, car seat cover and pull it down a little bit to where you can see your child and you can angle it to where you can see your baby through. Um, I thought that these were helpful for um, my children because I thought that it was nice to have it as a cover um, mm -hmm. for, um, so if you're out and about, you have that on the car seat and then you can um, nurse while having that cover on top of you. Um, so I thought that that was a nice um, newer product out there. And then more car seat accessories. So top left, you'll see that there is a mirror. So that's what we're gonna talk about on this um, part of the presentation. So the mirror is attached to the uh, car, the seat in the car that your baby is attached to for their car seat. And it helps you to see your baby um, when you're driving. But the thing is, it is distracting. So I, I don't think that is as necessary. And also all it takes is just a little bump uh, when you're putting your baby in and then the angle will be wrong and you can't really see them anyway. So. So if you like it, you know, but it's more important to be a safe driver. Yeah, um, it would be. It's much. It's, it's, the, the safety risk is more that I you get the, that you aren't looking and get into a car accident. Yeah, yeah the, than yeah. that your baby's doing something. Exactly. In the back. Yeah. yeah. And then the dangling toy, very nice, very useful when you're driving. You have the dangling toy to entertain your child, and also when we talked about, you can put them into the stroller with the car, so you can still have that on there, so they can play. So that's really nice. And, and those dangling toys are more for like at least three months. Yes. Right. So yeah, because it, because yeah, this little baby, newborn, so yeah, because it's a newborn <laughs> yeah. is yeah, can't so clearly reach, older. Yeah, yeah, a newborn can't physically reach for things with yeah. intention. So yeah. so that's you know, later. The, yeah. Newborn. So this is more like a three four month old. Yeah. That little baby there who's reaching and engaged. That's that's a slightly older baby. Yes. Yeah. And then the bottom two photos, these generally come with the car seats already, but they're basically on the bottom left is a like a cushion insert that you can put in the car seat if your baby's a little bit smaller um, preterm. This keeps them a little more snug in the car seat, but again, they usually come with them now, but if they don't, you can definitely buy them online. And then bottom right is basically a little um, soft cushion that you can add onto the straps in case your car seat doesn't come with that. So it's so it helps protect their skin, um, but makes it a little softer, a little cushionier. But again, those usually come with the car seats these days. And then the, the car seat should have instructions that tell you if you like what the weight and yes. size of your baby is use, to use yeah, the insert. The insert, yeah. Because if you have a regular full term baby, you probably you don't, don't need, need one. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's come, yeah. And then for strollers, so there's a lot of strollers out there. Um, so <clears throat> for this, the main thing is don't give a, don't get overwhelmed. And don't go too crazy with trying to plan so far ahead to where you think that you need it all figured out. Um, there's not one perfect stroller. And um, hang on, I need a little sip of water. <coughs> Excuse me. And these strollers are like what you'll find with a lot of these baby products is that is cool, but also like kind of overwhelming. Is there is like these devices? They're all like transformers. Yeah. Like they they'll are. tell you you can. <coughs> 
you know, you can get attachments and put a second child or, yes. you they know. they all convert. Oh, not all. A lot of them but, convert. Yeah, they do a lot of, they have a lot of attachments and do a lot of different things, yeah. which is good if you use all of them. But sometimes I wouldn't invest too much in there, into that. Yes. So keep it simple. Start with the most basic one. Um, the most important things really about strollers are that they are easy to use, meaning you can fold them easily by yourself. Um, they're lightweight, so you can actually pick them up and that you can fit them in the back of your car mm -hmm. um, and that they fit in the back of your car. Some are huge. So, um, so those are the most important parts of a stroller. And then I think, too, storage is good, too. You'll see some of them don't have as much storage space. Um, but there is that universal stroller on the bottom there that you can click in uh, the car seat into. So we talked about how you can use that. Um, and then with the car seat clicking into the stroller, know that there's usually a little adapter there so you can put the car seat in, then you can switch later to a, a seat. But again, try not to get overwhelmed by all of it. It is a good idea to um, try out some of these strollers prior. So, you know, going to a store that has the strollers that you can play around with, see what you like, see if it's easy for you to, to fold it, see if it's easy to lift it, borrow a friend's. Um, and then over time, you'll probably accumulate two or three different strollers because not one yeah. stroller fits every situation that you're going to be in. So, in, in, so s most strollers, you can attach the infant car seat. Um, some you can't, they're just for older children. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But in and, and having, right, and having some, something for your infant car seat is helpful, whether it be that the actual stroller attaches, like comes with it, like it's a travel system, mm -hmm. or that universal stroller just means it's just a small stroller, I guess, for, and, and all it's only used for clicking in and out your infant car seat, and yeah. you don't use it otherwise. The nice thing is it's really lightweight. Light. Yeah, it's light really small. lightweight, so yeah. that's mm -hmm. nice for it. Yeah. And then stroller accessories. So um, these are some things that you can add on to your stroller if needed. So the, the hook on the top left, the, the, like the mommy hook there, really nice for attaching your purse, a bag, shopping bag. Um, and then the top right picture is trying to show you that any diaper bag essentially comes with straps, most of them, comes with straps that you can hook onto your stroller if you're going out for a longer period of time or in general you should always have something with you diaper wise when you're uh, leaving with your stroller. And then, um, but bottom right, if you just want to go for a little cruise around the neighborhood, you don't want to bring everything with you, um, you can just throw some diapers in the bottom uh, storage area. It's nice to have a cup holder as a mom, um, also a place to put your keys or a cell phone. So they have accessories, they're called organizers that attach onto the car seat or sorry, the stroller um, that you can put all your things in. Um, make sure it's small though, because you're gonna probably wanna use that sometimes with the diaper bag. Um, so try to get one that's a little compact. And then uh, bottom left is nice for when your baby's a little bit older. Again, like the older right. type um, accessories. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it right away, but this is something that's nice to um, have. It's a tray um, that you can put food on there for your little one. You can put a cup or a bottle in that cup holder, but that's usually when they're feeding themselves at that point. So, but the the hooks are the hooks separate. are great. You need yeah. some you need hooks and you need some place to put a cup. <laughs> put a cup, yes. Yeah, your <laughs> coffee. Yeah, your water. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, for carriers. So for carriers, there are a lot of different types out there. Again, kind of the the theme of this talk. That's why we're trying to help you narrow it down. But. Um, for these are different um, types. So there's the wrap and then there's the structured carrier, the softer structured carriers. And um, the wrap is the one in the middle there where you see the little baby sticking their head out of. Um, those are basically this long fabric that you have to learn how to wrap around yourself to then pouch and put your baby in. Um, there are many YouTube videos out there that show you how to do this. Um, I found it to be kind of hard, but I also didn't do it a lot. So I didn't really quite get used to it, but it is really nice for when they're little. So again, you have to look at the weight requirements for these uh, uh, carriers because sometimes they have a minimum, you no, know, they always will have a minimum requirement in terms of their weight and to put them in for the more structured ones. Um, so if they're littler um, in the newborn phase, the wraps are nice when you, you create that wrap and they're, they're cushioned in there and you can walk around with them. Um, it is personal preferences to uh, whether or not you like to use carriers though too. Um, 
So once a little bit bigger, um, usually it's eight pounds, but check the, the um, instructions on the carrier. You can put your baby into the bottom left there. Um, so it's already there for you. Just strap your baby on in. Um, they usually start forward or facing you and then they face out um, once they have good head control, but read the instructions. Um, I find that I use these most when I was at a like a large gathering, like a party where you want to keep your baby close to you, but you don't always have to carry them because it's really nice for your arms to be free and not always carrying them. But some moms like to just go around the house with them all the time, carry them, um, walks on the beach, um, but personal preference, but um, that kind of broke that down a little bit for you to make it. I mean, I would say I time. did not use a, a, well, I didn't use the wraps at all. I just held my baby when my baby was little and then the carrier on, on the left, I did use for a very short period of time because the other thing is your baby gets heavy. <laughs> yeah, so, oh yeah, that's, I was far enough to mention that. Yeah, like, so. <laughs> that's what a stroller is for, people. Yes, And yes, if yeah. you think that you're gonna carry the baby and you're gonna carry a bag, like, and you're carrying the diaper bag in your purse, like, that's not realistic. Yeah, so for the most part, you're gonna use a stroller. Um, yeah. And a lot of times these are converting too. So they convert to like all the way up to like toddlerhood where you can put them on your back. But again, they're I heavy. Can't, I can't imagine. Toddlers, <laughs> toddlers like to run around anyways. They don't like to be put in places, but some some I've seen. That's a great location really, for them to pull you know, your hair though. Pull your hair, yeah. you know, so. <laughs> uh, but you, you, usually you're using a stroller, but I mean, it's really personal preference too. And the bottom line is that when your baby's little, especially a newborn, they have to face you, yes. right? Because the thing is they don't have much neck control. No. So if you see the picture, especially the one that has, it's the same woman and the same baby, and in one picture, the baby's facing her and the other one, the baby's facing out. What you can see when the baby's facing out is that that baby on their own is holding up their head really well, mm -hmm. okay? So if your baby's like this, then they don't get to face not, forward yeah, yet, yet, right? Yeah. So they have to be like this, and then, what the babies do like about that is that they get to look around at the world, but also when they get older, they get heavier. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I would say my, like their, in my case, like their father used this more because he had much more <laughs> strength than I did. I pretty much went with the stroller just carrying yeah, them. Yeah, I, I thought that I was gonna use these all the time, but I found that I didn't use them as often as I, yeah, imagined, but. Like they're good for a walk. But I yes, just think most of the beach, most of parties. suburban life yeah. is not necessarily yeah. walking around. Yeah. But anyway, oh, sorry, we're just trying to get it to advance. There we go. So health and safety. So just a few points about skincare, some few basic medical things, and baby monitors. So the bottom idea with with anything with skin products, um, anything that's gonna be touching your baby's skin, we really prefer fragrance-free or hypo, or, or it could be called hypoallergenic products. So there's a lot of products out there that are have beautiful Lavender. citrus, yeah, scents and all these things. As pediatricians, we would really prefer you stay away from those. Um, because even though things like lavender and citrus are natural, they are naturally occurring, um, but also, they're, ir they, they're potentially irritating, right? Like, for example, pe pollen is natural, but there's a lot of people who are allergic to it, right? So we really prefer um, fragrance-free uh, products. We, we like the products to be as basic as possible because newborn skin is really sensitive. So typically, you'll have some type of baby wash, which, for example, you can get a body wash and shampoo separately, just like you probably use for yourself, or you can get a baby wash, which is everything together, which that's what I went with, because why make it more complicated? Yeah. But, um, and you could get some type of body lotion cream. Um, usually we don't, we don't necessarily use those right at the beginning, but usually at some point you'll use some cream. But again, we're looking for fragrance-free products. Um, diaper wipes should be fragrance-free and laundry, laundry detergent should be as well. Now you don't, there are baby laundry detergents. You don't have to get those. So for example, if you go to the regular section of your store where they have Tide and All and whatever those things are called, they all, nowadays they all make a hypoallergenic product. That's mm -hmm. fine, you can use that. And then also too, I was gonna mm -hmm. add on that a lot of dermatologists recommend now, pediatric dermatologists actually recommend to not even use like soap and wash when you're actually caring for, especially when they're really young. So you can just be doing like water washes, but absolutely if you're gonna be, they soil themselves, they pee on themselves. So those scenarios like using right. those gentle washes, but in general you may not even be using like a soap. 
right. Right. And bathing your baby like once, twice a week is plenty yeah. for your newborn. Yeah. And you usually don't need the lotion either unless there's a problem. No. Yeah. yeah. So. So diapers, um, I mean, to be perfectly honest, most people use disposable diapers because they're really much more practical because um, poop is not fun to clean. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, <laughs> baby poop is better Easy. than any other poop, but it's still, it's still poop. So, um, so for your baby, what matters in terms of the diapers is that it's, it has good absorption, right? Because moisture up against your skin is irritating and the natural chemicals that are in pee and poop are really irritating and babies pee and poop constantly so diapers need to be very have to have good absorption so they try to wick away the um, moisture so that the skin their baby's skin is not so irritated okay um cloth or excuse me disposable diapers tend to have better absorption um so even if you're going to use cloth diapers, that's fine, but if your baby has a diaper rash, you might temporarily move to disposable ones. For some fam families, um, the, the cost is a consideration. Certainly, um, cloth diapers, would, if, if you're washing them yourselves, are less expensive. I mean, diapers are expen expensive. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there's the ever-important cleanup. Again, cleaning poop is not really fun. So, um, but environment-wise, the, the yes. cloth diapers would be great. Mother yes. Nature would love it because, because disposable diapers are take up a lot of space in our landfills, I'm sure. Yes. And there are companies that do help with the, the cleaning of the, the um, cloth diapers. Yes. So then it they becomes come, like, more... They come like weekly or something. Or, right. Or, yeah. But then, then they're not cost effective. I mean, I mean sorry. Yeah. yeah. Then the, they're more expensive that way. Though. Then they're probably... The cost is similar to disposable diapers. Yeah. If you use yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the other thing that you definitely should get um, is diaper rash cream. So <clears throat> in general, you don't have to use diaper rash cream every time you change your baby. Um, some people like to, and that's fine. If the, the, the diaper area is getting red, especially in a newborn, I would start using, pasting start that diaper cream on right away because newborn skin is very sensitive. And again, they're constantly peeing and pooping. And so, you can go from a very little diaper rash to a very gnarly looking di yeah, diaper raw. rash that makes you so feel bad about yeah. the baby, <laughs> um, bad for the baby uh, very quickly. Uh, now, there's a lot of diaper rash cream products, most of which I, I only like a couple of them, to be perfectly Same. honest. So some of them have lanolin or they'll have um, basically vas petroleum, which is like a Vaseline. And then others have zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is what makes them like a white cream. Now, um, when you look at the back of the cream, it'll say in big letters, active ingredient zinc oxide, and then it will have a percentage. It'll range from eight to anywhere from eight to 40%. The higher percentage, the better it works. The higher percentage is a much thicker paste. So if you imagine the old idea of like the the lifeguard who has that like white, <laughs> right? That white um, sunscreen right here that's really thick, that's zinc oxide. So 40% zinc oxide is, works way better. I'm gonna be honest, I don't understand the purpose of 8%. 8%, it looks like, it's kind of like if you put suntan lotion on, but you didn't, you didn't really like rub it in real well, as opposed to 40% looks like you just painted the side of your house. That's, That's like what it so should look thick. like. Yeah. <laughs> so because the zinc, does, the zinc oxide does two things. One, zinc helps with healing. Um, two is that because it's this thick physical barrier, that means the next time your baby pees and poops, there's a coating on the skin so that the urine and the poop doesn't further irritate the skin. So I've only had the 40%. And there's only a couple that make that. For the most part, look for the products that say maximum strength, mm -hmm. and then that's where you'll find them. Yep. So basically, I think most most diaper rash creams are kind of pointless. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> unless you want to just like, yeah, not really yeah. fix anything. <laughs> so. Most of them are much better than you Vaseline. Know, yeah, so. Sorry, totally <laughs> okay, so thermometers. Um, in the first column, the green column, you'll see preferred. So. Your neighborhood, your friendly neighborhood pediatrician <laughs> will always prefer either a rectal, they, that you use either a rectal thermometer or a temporal artery thermometer. Those are the forehead scanners, okay? Now, 
most of us as pediatricians, we just use rectal thermometers <laughs> <laughs> because even though most parents think like are kind of hesitant, it's really easy to do um, and it's really not a big deal. Um, the only, th what you do is you put a little Vaseline on the tip of the rectal thermometer. They even have ones that are specifically for rectal thermometers, so they're okay. shorter, so you don't have to feel like, oh, am I putting this in too far? Um, and you basically put the baby down like you're gonna change the diaper, and then you put the thermometer in. What I would say is make sure you have a diaper underneath the baby's butt, because mm -hmm. when you pull out that thermometer, you may also have poop. Um, and I would also say once you use the thermometer directly, that's the only place it is ever used. That is no longer <laughs> an oral thermometer. Mm -hmm. So many thermometers will say you can use that orally, like in their mouth or their butt. What I would say is- Don't ever if go you, back. Yeah, if you put it in there where they poop, please don't use it in their mouth anymore. Just hopefully that's common sense. Okay, um, the temporal artery thermometers, which are the forehead ones, are theoretically easy to use, right? They're certainly not invasive. Um, most parents find these very confusing, I'm gonna be honest, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, make sure you look at the instructions because most people don't use them correctly and you have to use it where it tells you to use it. Do not use it on the head, do not use it on the chest. You can't just like pick a place to no. use it. it, it's very specific. Um, now the category that says special circumstances is because so many hospitals will recommend doing an axillary temperature. That means the armpit, okay? Um, what I would say for this is that some hospitals will recommend that you check your baby's temperature several times a day after going home from the hospital, just as like a- Precautionary. Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. If that's why you're doing it, then fine, do it this way. Um, I don't think it's necessary to do that. Uh, we'll talk about when, as a pediatrician, we would actually recommend taking a temperature, but if you're just doing it just because, then fine, do this way. Um, if you do this way and the temperature's on the high side, which we'll talk about in the next slide, then you need to pick one of these green ones. So forehead or booty is what I'm telling you. <laughs> now, this Preferred little, the booty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, this little girl who has the oral thermometer, those are for much older kids, much okay? Older. So you you don't even need an no oral thermometer. Yeah. With that. <laughs> and as a pediatrician, we never, ever, ever like the ear thermometer or the pacifier thermometer. Don't even take it then because those are not accurate. No. And especially as your child gets a little older, they don't like things put in their ears. So. If you go to your pediatrician and say you took the temperature this way, they're going to tell you to get a different thermometer, so just don't buy one like that in the first place, right? Okay. Okay, so fever. Fever is a temperature of 100.4 or more. If, you're, if you prefer Celsius, that's 38.0 or more, okay? 99 is not a fever, okay? Now, most pediatricians will say the only time you need to take a temperature is if your baby is excessively sleepy, excessively fussy, or feels hot. If those things are, and excessively sleepy could mean I just, I keep trying to wake them up to feed and they normally wake up well and they're not, okay? Mm -hmm. So if your baby is excessively fussy, sleepy, or feels hot, then you should take a temperature. And if that's if you're doing it for that reason, then you're gonna, going to use one of those preferred methods, not the axillary one, okay? Because we want a real temperature then. Now, <clears throat> if babies are under two months of age and they do have a fever, you need to contact your doctor, okay? Um, let's say that you took a temperature and the baby's temperature was 100 or 100.2. Babies, can get overheated if you've put too much clothing and blankets on them. So if they're not 100.4, but they're kind of warm, then unbundle them and retake their temperature about 20 minutes later. If it was just because you put too many layers on them, the, the temperature will come down. If it's going to be a fever, then it's going to go up. Um, in general, you, you, you can invest in some infant Tylenol or acetaminophen is the generic form. Um, we typically won't, I, we typically would advise not to use this until your baby is probably closer to two months old. Um, basically before two months, 
do not use Tylenol or acetaminophen unless your doctor said, tells you to. Okay, it's not that you can't use it, but you shouldn't be using it unless your doctor tells you to. Okay, um, ibuprofen, which is Motrin or Advil, um, babies can't take until they're six months old, so no reason to invest in it now. In general, the two tools you have for fever are Tylenol and Motrin slash Advil. Um, but again, before they're six months, it's Tylenol and that's it. So for nasal congestion, so I just want to start by saying that um, almost every baby will have some level of congestion and it doesn't usually mean that there's a problem. Um, it doesn't mean that they have allergies, it doesn't mean they have a, uh, a cold, usually, obviously talk to your pediatrician. Allergies aren't diagnosed till way later anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't always cause problems, so you don't always have to address it. Um, when it is causing problems was basically when they are um, having a hard time feeding because of it, having a hard time sleeping because of it, you see a bunch of thick mucus in there, then yes, absolutely, you can address it. So in order to address congestion, you can get a bulb suction. So you can see in that top footer right there, basically you'd want to take the bulb and squeeze it, insert into the nostril, make sure you get a good seal in there, and then you uh, uh, let go and then you'll get the um, suction out of the, the uh, mucus. And then the bottom picture is a nose sucker, which um, is not for everyone. Some people like it. Um, I liked it. My husband hated it. So it's, again, Most it's something that's really very enthusiastic about. Yeah, it, Most of them are probably overly <laughs> enthusiastic so about So basically there's a little applicator <laughs> that is attached to a little like hose that you um, have a, um, a, a mouthpiece for, and then the applicator goes into the nose, and then you're able to suck out the um, congestion that way. There is obviously a filter and a block. It's not going to go into your mouth. Um, no, but you nobody's can, asking you to eat your kids' boogers. No, please don't. don't <laughs> please don't do that. Um, so you can control the pressure, and you can control like how often you're doing it for. For those ones, I must say, I think that the um, the tip of it is a little bit wider than a the tip of a uh, bulb suction. So if your baby has a little smaller nostrils, that might not be as helpful, but you can always get one or the other. Um, well, and the reason why, I'm sure the, so when I had my kids, the, the sucking your own children's boogers out wasn't an option. We just had the bulb syringe, which don't work real well. But <clears throat> the reason why there's probably a larger caliber on it is because when even when you use a bulb syringe you're not supposed to put it in the baby's nose you're supposed to put it right at the opening yeah. um and the reason is because if you are very aggressively suctioning the inside of your baby's nose you will cause irritation in the nose and it will get a little swollen and then your baby sounds even snortier right so when we say nasal congestion most of the time you're not seeing it it's that parents are like oh he sounds congested when he's breathing i can hear you know like snortiness from his yes. nose okay and baby's nostrils are so tiny that even if they have like one little booger it will make noise right. right our nostrils are big so if we just have normal boogers you don't hear anything so if you hear it but the baby's not bothered then just leave it alone leave it alone because this baby looks very happy <laughs> but in real life the babies are very they're they're going to let you know uh, they're going to let you know how unpleasant it is for their nose to be sucked. They don't out. like it for the most part, but no. But if you have to address it, then these are the things that you use for. Right. And I was going to mention yes, you don't want to do too. You don't want to do it too often, especially with these um, bulb suction, because mm -hmm. you can cause inflammation <coughs> and swelling in the nose, and it can lead to problems, irritation, bleeding, swelling. Mm -hmm. um, so try to be as minimal as possible with this. Um, and then the things that you can um, do with it are some saline drops. So that's helpful um, to, you can do it with the suction or by itself. Um, so you just basically put one or two drops in it per nostril and that will help break everything up, allow them to swallow it, sneeze it out. Um, and so it makes it a little bit easier for them if they have that congestion that you have to actually address. Um, and, and you know what, parents tend to be very, this is a little bit older kids, but they tend to be very, they think it's, parents tend to think that it's a problem if kids swallow their post-nasal drip, oh, right? Yes. Like parents are like, oh, he doesn't cough it out. It's okay. What hap what's supposed to happen is that the mucus goes from your nose into your stomach and then gets deactivated. Yeah. So you don't get sick by like, like snuffing no. your... I don't know what the right that, word yes. is by sniffling up your boogers, right? You yeah. don't, you don't, that doesn't make you sick. So, yeah. Mm -mm. Yes. And then, <clears throat> um, 
I was going to say something about that. Okay. I'll Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, and, the and coolest then, humidifiers. <laughs> yes, and the humidifiers are very helpful too. Um, those you'll use all the time if you invest in one um, for congestion, for cold. So it just helps, again, kind of break up everything. Oh, yes. That's what I was going to say. Is that also the reason why babies often sound um, congested is because if they have even a little bit of reflux or spit up too, which almost every baby does, that will come up in the mouth and you can hear it echoing up and it's not necessarily like, you know, all coming from their nose either. So you'll hear this a lot. If they're not bothered by it, you can leave it alone. Right. Um, but if you think that, so if you think the congestion is inter, is making it hard for them to eat or sleep, then go ahead and use the suction. Yep, if they're eating and sleeping fine, then just leave yeah. it alone. And if they start having things like cough, fever, obviously there's a problem. So contact your pediatrician. And then for baby monitors, there are a lot out there, <laughs> as I've been saying a lot for this uh, this talk. Um, try not to get too overwhelmed. Try not to spend too much money. Um, they can be very costly. So what I think are the most important um, features, though, of baby monitors are um, that you can see your baby and that you can hear your baby. Um, when you hear them, you don't necessarily have to always address them. But so in order to determine if you need to or not, it's nice to be able to look at your uh, monitor to see what's going on versus going into the room and then waking them up and then having to start all, all over again with um, their sleep. So it's nice to be able to look on your phone or uh, sorry, on the monitor to see if what what's actually happening. Um, and by the smart part, the ones that we do not recommend are the ones that you can that measure respiratory rate, oxygen saturation, temperatures. Those have been actually recalled um, by the FDA because they haven't actually been proven to. Um, they're not actually a. Uh, they're, they're, they were designated as like a safety product, and mm -hmm. um, they don't actually help prevent any uh, events that could lead to problems. Um, they're, and very they, right? they're very inaccurate. They're very inaccurate. So and they, they make also it look cause, like they're going to save the life of your baby. And they're, but, yeah, they don't. And yeah. they also cause more stress in the family. So the alarms are going off all the time and they're not accurate. And so I would not waste your money with that. And obviously they're recalled. Um, and But but you would like, it is, it's nice to have the one that connects to your phone. Um, so now they, a lot of these connect to your phone so you can access the monitor on your phone. So that's a really nice feature, I think. Just remember that, I mean, ultimately, let's be honest, these companies are selling a product. So just because they make a product that says it can measure the humidity in the room, I have no idea why you'd ever need that. And what would you do if the room, if you, I don't even know what the right humidity would be and how are you going to change it? Right. If it, I mean, it's silly. And I actually <laughs> use, I just found a camera that I use that does what a baby monitor would do, but it's a camera and it was like $20. And anything that has baby on it usually is exponentially more expensive. So, um, and I so just used an audio about. one because yeah, I lived audio. in a small apartment. So, but it's nice to look at them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, most yes, people would like because they it. make a noise. Yeah. You either be very patient, which is hard to be patient, and keep listening to see. Okay, is yeah. this a problem? Or now you can just look on your phone. You yes. see, and you oh yeah, they're fine. And yeah. then you can hopefully go back to bed. Okay, so thank you very much for your patience. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Do we, we want to see if there's any questions. Let's okay, see. There are here. some questions. Okay, okay, hopefully we can answer them. Okay. Okay. At least for me. Okay, so this matters. says, my baby will be born next month. I already received a convertible car seat. Should I return it now and buy it in two years because it will expire? Um, no. So the convertible car seat, at the you will you, most people end up it. using it within the first year, yeah. um, unless you have like a really, really tiny, tiny baby. But yeah. most people use it Pretty for quickly. sure within the first year. Yeah. I mean, most people, it's within the first six months. Yes. Six months gets to kind of be like pushing it. So they get, they get heavy. And so when they're in that um, infant car seat, carrying them around, it's actually, it's, it starts to hurt your back. And yeah. so, so you don't so need to no, return yeah, it. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would keep it. No, not a convertible car seat. No, yeah, you'll use it. Oh, that's it. <gasps> that was easy. That's all the questions Good job. we have. Wow. We, knew the, okay. we, we knew the answers. Well, okay. thank you so much again for tuning in and listening for your patience. I um, hope you learned something. And, um, and yeah. I Hopefully guess, yeah. you will make better better buying decisions yes. now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have fun with it too also. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>